going from one tried and true technique in the stick bait, we're gonna go right back into another one and we're gonna talk about bass jigs. More importantly, compact bass jigs. You know, any kind of bass jig is just basically anything between three eighths ounce, half ounce, five eighths, three quarter, maybe up to an ounce, something like that, and varies between swim jigs, your standard arky style pitching jigs, uh, heavier grass jigs that are meant to, you know, penetrate and get through grass, and then of course, fishing off source structure or something like a football jig. A compact jig though, on the other side isn't really a finesse jig. A finesse jig is a smaller jig, but that's also a lot lighter. 3 16 quarter, 5 16 something like that in that variety, where the compact jig is still your standard bass jig, and we're still using those weights, but we're making everything sized down. Again, we talked about it with the with the stick bait, with the Nico rig, uh, sizing the presentation down for finicky pressured fish, and that's what we're doing with the jig. You know, again, using those same exact sizes, in this case, this is a 5 ace jig, but it's compact. Now we're using tungsten, so now we're able to shrink a jig head all the way down by using tungsten. Gives me a lot more feel when I'm offshore, feeling stuff around, gives me a ton more feel using that tungsten over lead, but again, big time importance, it makes that jig small. Now we have to match the rest of the jig to it. We're using a stout, but a smaller hook, you know, smaller plastics, and then even all the way to the silicone skirts, this is like frog hair type stuff, really thin skirting material. So now we've taken a jig, a regular jig, we've compacted it down. This one right here is my standard, this is the Outcast Tackle Cage Fighter jig. They have an array of them, we'll take it to the boat. But this is also something you see a lot in, in other, other jig companies out there. Kai Tech, big time out of Japan. I think they were the ones technically that took the jig again and shrunk it down. You're seeing a trend here, stuff coming from Japan and coming into the American market, us taking our tried and true ways that we've been doing it, taking better ways that they're doing it and making an overall better bait. So let's take it to the boat and let's dive into compact jigs. The bass jig. This right here is the old school bass jig. Uh, bigger skirt, stuff like that. You can look at the compact jig and see the size difference right off the bat. Uh, this is the compact jig. Again, they come in every single jig size, but in this case, to keep it real simple, we're going to break down just your regular pitching and grass jig. First thing is the setup. For all my jig fishing, I'm using anywhere between a seven foot and a seven and a half foot heavy action rod. All right, I want a heavy action rod which is pretty stiff because whether I'm using braid or floral carbon, again, whether it's grass or it's offshore structure, that's all different, but the rod's gonna stay relatively the same. Because when I pitch it out there or I cast it out there, I get bit, I need to set the hook and I need to penetrate the hook. It ain't like a crankbait, jerkbait, nothing like that, a spinnerbait where I'm reeling it through the column and all of a sudden a fish basically commits suicide on it, just hits it and hooks itself. In this situation, they're picking it up on a slack line and I gotta hit them and I gotta penetrate that hook through so it's going to be a heavy action rod mine that i'm using is a g loomis nrx 854 jig worm rod now top of the line g loomis rod but at the same time this is a seven seven foot one inch rod heavy action and they make this all the way through their lines down to the e6x the imx pro the glx up to the nrx rod and and, and all lines of rods you can find just your standard seven to seven and a half foot heavy my reel i'm using a shimano metallic Titanium XG 8 speed. Again, anytime I'm using a jig, with the exception of a swim jig, I'm gonna use an eight speed reel because I'm casting it out there and I'm using the rod to give the bait its action. I'm using the rod to impart that while I'm shaking it, I'm dragging it, I'm using the rod. So it gets bit on a slack line. I set the hook with the heavy action rod and I need to catch up line quick. I need to catch up and get back on that fish so I can keep a good, I can keep the fish pinned real good. So the eight speed's gonna help with that. And you know, I use Shimano all the way from the Corrado line, the SLX line, up into the Metanium, they're all good. Price point is just really up to the consumer what they're coming in for. The more they're willing to spend, the better overall product they're gonna get at the end of the day. But when it comes right down to it, my favorite out of the Shimano line is gonna be a Corrado K, and I think that's your best all around bang for your buck when it comes to a Shimano reel, Shimano bass fishing reel, especially when it comes to fishing jigs. If I am running floral carbon line, I'm going with anything between 15 pound, probably at my lightest, up to 20 pound at a, probably my heaviest. A lot of times, 
sometimes landing in that 15 or 17 mark. 15, I like that more when I'm casting far out there and I want that, you know, a little bit more of a sneaky presentation. 17, 20, when I'm up pitching around docks and into lay downs and all that. In this case here, I'm running on this jig because mostly open water where I'm fishing, 15 pound Seeger and Visex fluorocarbon. Now that we've covered what we're using to fish it, let's talk about what we're actually fishing. The compact jig, again, can come in multiple different sizes, whether it's a pitching jig, you know, a hard cover jig like lay downs and docks, a grass jig, a swimming jig. You know, I've seen them get compact and a little bit more, more finesse style. And of course, football jigs, structure jigs, ones you're gonna throw out there and reel back. For the course of this one, we'll talk about your pitching and your grass jigs and some of the differences. But basically, when it comes to the jig, it's a skirted jig, in this case, tungsten, which helps it be more compact. Skirted jig, the head size changes different. Football jig's gonna be a little bit more round, meant to come through the rocks. Pitching jig is gonna have a horizontal line tie, and it's gonna be more for crawling through cover brush, lay downs, docks. Uh, your grass jigs, at the same time, they're gonna have a vertical line tie. And what they're gonna do is that's better for coming into the grass probing and coming back out clean. Swim jigs have more of like a pointed nose. They swim through the grass, real ideal. In a lot of cases, I like this compact jig right here, and this is the Outcast Tackle Cage Fighter. And that's because I can do a lot with this. I can pitch grass with it, I can throw up under lay downs, I can swim it back when I'm done pitching it back and forth. But then you're gonna have your hook. Underneath your hook, you're going to have your trailer, and you also have a weed guard. The weed guard, that helps keep brush and brush off, grass off, and it's going to vary depending on what you're doing. More of a heavy cover jig, it's going to have a stiffer weed guard. More of a swim jig, it's going to have a lot more flexible one because that's used for a little bit more open water. And lastly, you're going to have some sort of a chunk or a jig trailer. Uh, they make some that are geared just towards being a jig trailer, and then also you can just use uh, your favorite soft plastic, trim it up if you need to and put that on the back of your jig and that's what's going to give your jig just a ton of presentation in my particular one with this compact i like to match it with kind of a smaller finessier little trailer again that's the point to try to make a nice tight but if you look at this compact jig this is a half ounce pitching jig if i show you a more old school look at the size difference right there this is a half ounce jig this is how I you know, learned how to do it. This is bass fishing. This is new school. This is compact. And that's the difference right there. So trying to match that, but still the same presentation, same weight, but just a smaller overall package. And when it comes to jig trailers, literally, we have all sorts of different kinds. I mean, you can kind of go through different ones. You want to match the hatch, match the skirt to the bottom of the jig. You have the one that I've been showing you right here. That's a catch coat product. The old school zoom chunk that probably started the game right there. Now that's just a chunk. You know, this isn't something that you could fish with a hook. You need to thread this onto the actual bait. So it's kind of one dimensional. Crawdads, crawdads are great. You know, I'll trim that thing up right there. Essentially with the jig, that's what you're, you're mimicking. You're mimicking a lot of things, but a lot of times it's a craw dad is what they think if you put a craw appendages or a craw trailer on it at the same time if you go with something like a paddle tail or a swim bait trailer or a grub now you're mimicking a bluegill or a shad so that's how versatile the actual jig can be here's one more box for you and this will show you know this is just some of my favorite common plastics that we know you know like a grub i can just take the grub take the top off thread this on and that's going to be a really good football trailer or something that i want to have more action similar to something like the strike king bait the rage bug you know that's a very popular one it's got a ton of appendages to it the old the brush hog you can trim this up so i'm using this as texas rig stuff carolina rig stuff i'm also using it on the back of my jigs all right putting a jig and a jig chunk together is kind of self-explanatory but at the same time i'm going to show you how to take one of my favorite soft plastics this is the biospawn exopod to one of my favorite jigs the outcast tackle uh cage fighter jig and how to put these two together by making this a little bit more compact in this case, the exopod is actually long enough and made for a four-aught hook just to actually flip on its own. So to make this thing fit this jig, all you really need is a scissors. I'm just going to knock off a couple like that and then flip the jig over and just thread it on just how much you need. Turn it back out push it up onto the keeper that's there for the actual chunk. You can see right there's a keeper that actually holds it on. Flip the jig over. Now you got a nice little compact jig. You can take it and I'll trim up all the skirt right here to make it have a little bit more flash, whatever you want to do, make it even more compact. But in the end, that's your jig.